the Apple Pencil here and highlight the facet joints in red. So looking at this posterior view, we can see this 90 degree vertical orientation of the facet joints. And when we look at this, we can see then that these walls, if you will, are gonna inhibit rotation. Just structurally, you're gonna hit bone when you try to turn in your lumbar. And it's a little different at L5S1. Okay. So here at L5S1, this is known as a transitional segment of the vertebral column. Incidentally, at lumbar number five and sacrum number one, that's where we have the most capacity for flexion. That, so it's very mobile and it also bears the weight of the column and the body. Mm -hmm. L5S1 disc injuries are common for that reason because of anatomy and times gravity. <laughs> <laughs> the equation of life, anatomy times gravity equals balance. <laughs> okay, so when we look at this segment, you can see the sagittal orientation mm -hmm. of the inferior L5 facets. But then when we look at S1, you can see a little more of the face of the facet joint because it has a little bit more of a frontal orientation. Now why this is important for us to know is we need to know that at transitional segments in the vertebral column, we have greater vulnerability or potential for wear and tear for mm -hmm. injury to arise because of the hybrid nature of the, that segment the inferior facets and the superior facets, how they articulate with one another in that segment, it's just a little different. We just need to know that so that we are making reasonable requests on the map. Now, if we move up the column to the thoracic, I'm gonna highlight the thoracic facet joints. So now in the lumbar, whoops, in the lumbar, the facet joints are oriented 90 degrees vertically in the sagittal plane. In the thoracic, however, the facet joints are oriented, you can see them, they're oriented about 60 degrees on a frontal plane. So right there, we can see when we look at the, the highlights on pocket anatomy that we have a lot more capacity for rotation because we're not hitting walls. Right. Does that make sense? You still with me? Yeah, it looks like these facet joints in the thoracic, when we would twist, just are gonna slide easily past each other. Exactly, and all facet joints slide and glide. And I have a little demonstration planned <laughs> in a few minutes that I hope will really uh, illustrate that action. Okay, now let's take a quick look at T12L1 because this is another transitional segment of the column. So here we have T12L1. Now L1, the superior facets of L1 are oriented sagittally. The inferior facets of T12 are also oriented sagittally. But then we look at the superior facets of T12 and we see that they are now thoracic in nature. They're oriented on that 60 degree angle in the frontal plane. So yeah. it is at this region at T12 where we still have extension capability, lumbar-esque extension, 
but then we also have the increased capacity for rotation. It's a, it's got a, a hybrid nature. So when you think about T12, L1, this um, transitional segment that you said is more vulnerable, that makes sense to me sort of intuitively. Can you ground us in a, uh, an actual asana, a pose where you would think about that knowing this is a transitional segment would, would make you think about the pose slightly differently? Where's oh a pose where this is challenged? Uh, triangle pose, trikonasana. Okay, why? Um, okay, so there are a lot of actions going on in trikonasana. Um, so we're side bending, we're in lateral flexion, and then we add thoracic rotation to the pose. And so T12L1 is often kind of a sticking point for our students because they may not, they may be flexing in their lumbar and also rounding their thoracic, and then they're trying to kind of crank themselves around into trikonasana, and they're not going anywhere. And so the more we understand about T12, well then we start to think about trikonasana or triangle pose, and we think, oh, I need to get, I need to take some of the bony compression out of T12 L1. So that means I wanna drag my ribs off of the basin of my pelvis. I wanna add a little bit of extension to my lumbar region and then exhale and rotate my thoracic. That's gonna free up the pose for people and they won't feel like they're shoving a square peg in a round hole. Okay, I love this. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. It really helps my learning brain to, when I get a little anatomy out to kind of get back onto into yoga land, because then immediately I can make the connection and feel almost feel those movements in my body as you're talking us through.